Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna talk about the cycle sort. Uh, this is a very interesting algorithm. I just wanna uh, check into the Wikipedia page once because I think it is a very good explanation. So the cycle sort is an in-place, unstable sorting algorithm. It is a comparison-based sorting algorithm. Theoretically, it tries to optimize the total number of writes to the original array unlike any other in-place sorting algorithm. Uh, so what it basically tries to do is, being an in-place sorting algorithm, it tries to uh, basically use only that particular memory space, that particular array, to do all of the sorts. It doesn't want to create new memory spaces or use too much space um, of the memory, like the flash memory or the, or the RAM, to, uh, you know, to sort the algorithm. So it wants to use as minimal space as possible to, you know, sort the entire array and it is a comparison based sorting algorithm what comparison based means is that it makes decisions based on comparing a one value to the other and so on and so forth let's just go through the code because i think that would make more sense um so here i'm just calling the cycle sort you know the cycle sort function and i'm just passing in uh, this array over here so this array is 26 68 79 42 and 48 these are just random numbers that are generated uh, from random.org okay i don't know why this space got so big oh wait a second okay let me just fix that cool so that works so um quinston how does this actually work so i'll give you an example okay now the paradigm here is that you need to figure out the position of the number and put it there and then never change it you need to figure out the position of the number directly from the start. So every time you run a loop, you need to figure out the position of that element and then put it there. For example, let's say 26 is here. Now if I run this loop over all of the elements, I'm going to figure out, okay, how many elements are less than 26? In this case, there are none, right? There are none. There are no elements that are less than 26 in this case which means 26 is already in its correct position, right? So you don't need to change it or do anything. Let's try another example. Let's try 60, um, 79 in this case. So if you check 79, how many elements are smaller than 79? There's one, two, three, and four, which means 79 should be placed at the fifth position, right? The fifth position. So you put that there. So that's just an example. Let's just go through the algorithm and see how algorithmically it's done so so for cycle start in range of 0 to length of array minus 1 so you passed in the array in this function called cycle sort uh, this is a function def cycle start function in Python blah 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 so you basically pass this in and what happens is uh, your cycle start value goes from 0 to the length of the array like if this is a for loop in which your cycle start values will go from 0 to the length of the array minus 1 why minus one? Because obviously in a comparison sort, if you compare the second last element to the last element and then the last element has nothing to compare next to it, you know what I'm saying, right? You don't, that if an element doesn't exist, you should not try to, you know, get it from the array because that will cause a memory exception error. So, okay. So this is your array and now item has a value also. So item after uh, this line executes will be equal to array of cycle start right now what is the value of cycle start cycle start is equal to zero right now right cycle start is zero because it starts from zero the for loop starts from zero so cycle starts value right now is zero item is equal to the array of cycle start so what is array of zero because this is basically the array oh i want a hash array of zero what is the array of zero the order of zero is 26. So you write 26 as your item, right? Your 26 is your item. Now, I'll basically copy paste this just to go forward. Now check what's happening over here. I'm putting in this, this position variable that is equal to cycle start. So position is equal to cycle start. What does that mean? So what is position equal to? Position is equal to zero, right? Position is equal to zero. Now check this out. For i in range of cycle start plus 1 length of array. So uh, what is i going through? So i will be equal to something between cycle start plus 1. So what is cycle start plus 1? Cycle start plus 1 is 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. 
And that value will continue until the length of the array. What is the length of the array? The length of the array is five. So in this loop, I will go from one to five. So let's start with the first point. So for array of zero, is that less than item? What is array of zero? Array of zero is 26. Um, so, oh, sorry, I will be equal to one, right? So if array of one is less than item, what is item? Item is 26. What is array of I? Array of I is 68 because I is one. So is, is array of I less than item? 68 less than uh, 26? No, it's not. 68 is not less than 26. So this will not be executed. We'll go forward. Is 79 less than 26? No. Is 42 less than 26? No. Is 48 less than 26? No. So pause never gets incremented. Never. It is still the value of zero. So pause is still zero. If pause is equal to equal to cycle start, continue. Now what just happened here? What just happened? What did this entire thing mean? Now this whole block was checking whether 26 has any values greater as we did before it has any values greater than itself and it did not right it did not have any values greater than itself and that is the reason why you don't need to continue any further you don't need to write any of this code or you don't need to execute any of this code because you already figured out that 26 is already sorted 26 is in its correct position in place in place sorted you didn't have to do anything all you needed to check was whether any of the other elements are greater than 26 and you realize that no none of the other values are greater than 26 which means 26 is at the correct position now when you write continue it means that if, if you know anything about python programming continue basically means that yo skip all of this code don't execute any of this code just go back and start the for loop from the from from where it should start so basically now the cycle start value of zero is over and when you go back to the for loop directly you jump from here to the for loop uh, cycle starts value becomes equal to one the item value uh, is now going to change because you know what happens it goes up the item is already set over here actually I think I should write that over up there because it just makes more sense um, so 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 this is our array and cycle starts value is one but now I have item is equal to array of cycle start so which means array of one which basically means what is array of one array of one is 68 so this value becomes 68 correct 68 now comes the most interesting part of the algorithm so pause is equal to cycle start so pause is equal to zero is it correct no cycle start is one so pause equal to one now you might imagine something like this that this is very interesting because now you're not going to basically check for the entire array. You're only going to check for the elements after the array. Only the elements after. Cycle start plus one. What is cycle start plus one in this case? Cycle start plus one is two. So if cycle start plus one is two, it means you're only going to check for the elements after 68. Only these elements. And these are the elements that are going to give you that particular result. So for i in range of cycle start plus one, length of the array, if array of i is less than item. Now, is, six, is 79 less than item? No, it's not. Is 42 less than 68? Yes, it is. Is 48 less than 68? Yes, it is. So you got two new values. So you do, so pause plus equal to became one plus equal to one. So plus equal to two, which is equal to three. So now pause will, is equal to three, right? So pause is equal to three. What does that mean? It means pause is equal to cycle start? No, it's not. So 68 is basically not in its correct position. 68 is not sorted. What is the correct position of 68? That's what this will basically decide. So, so now you might be confused a little bit and you say, hey, Quinston, why is pause equal to one still there? And I might, and, and, and the reason why this is, is because this is for handling duplicates. So in some cases, you might actually uh, want to put it in the right position but what you might end up doing is taking the same values again because there might be duplicates in the entire array so for handling duplicates what you do is while item is equal to array of pause pause is 3 what is item item is 68 so while these are equal you pause equal to 1 so if they're equal it means that they are the same value which means you need to shift 
your position by one value to the right or one value to the left. Sorry, one value to the right. But in this case, uh, it is not a duplicate, right? It is not a duplicate, so which means you can directly swap the values. So this is basically swapping. This is basically swapping. And what do you swap? You swap the item that you have, right, with the position that you're currently pointing to. What is the position you're currently pointing to? Three. And what does position signify? It signifies the correct value of item. Pause. In this case, signifies the correct position where 68 should exist if you're sorting this array into an ascended array. So this is basically, we're trying to do this as an ascended array or going up array. So yeah, pause signifies the perfect position that it needs to be in. So you'll never have to change it again. In this case, pause is three. And so you'll do that and you'll swap it. So what is that three right now? Zero, one, two, three, 42 is at three. So you basically put 68 here and then you put 42 here. And in Python, it's very easy to swap. This is the, the, the basic line to swap the array. It's very straightforward, it's very simple, and you swap the array. I'm just gonna copy this and put it here so that it makes more sense so that I can go through the entire array. Um, cool, so you swapped it, right? So you swapped these two elements. Now, you might observe um, an inconsistency. And the inconsistency is that there is 68 twice. And as we know, 68 is not supposed to be twice, 68 is so supposed to be only once. So the next logical step, so you put 68 in its right position, but now there are two instances of 68. So what you need to do right now is you need to go through the entire um, array once and, and basically rotate it. Rotate it. You try to put as many elements as possible in its place while pause is equal, not equal to cycle stuff. So what your aim is to do is to bring pause back to the value of cycle start so that, so what is the value of pause right now? Pause is equal to three, right? So pause is definitely not equal to cycle start. Why do you need to bring it to cycle start? Because then you can exchange it. And when you exchange it, you will exchange the right value in its place. So you rotate the array and rotating the array is basically writing, doing this same thing over and over again. So you're doing this same thing over and over again. Check this out. Why a pause is not equal to cycle start? Is pause equal to cycle start right now? It's not, it's obviously not equal to cycle start. So you say pause equal to cycle start, which means pause becomes, uh, or I can just write that here, pause becomes um, one. Again, in this loop, cycle start is one. Remember that, cycle start is one. So pause is equal to cycle start. Now, what is the aim? Your aim right now is to put 42 in its right position. Remember that. So in order to put uh, 42 in its right position, what you need is to have pause be equal to the index of that particular value. So I pause should be equal to the value, the index where 42 will go in, will go in. And the other value will be taken out and then the same thing will repeat until you get the right values, right? So for I in range of cycle start plus one, so what is I going to be? Your I is going to go from um, cycle start plus one, which is two to five. So I is going to go from two to five. If array of I is less than item, what is array of I in this case? Array of I is 79. Array of I is 79, correct? Array of I is 79. So is 79 less than 42? No. Is 68 less than 42? No. Is 48 less than 42? No. So none of these values were less than 42. Here, again, you will handle duplicates. You will increment pause if it's, if it's a duplicate. But you have realized that pause is the same value. You have not incremented pause even once because none of these values are greater, which means that 42 fits in one. So 42's position is position of one. So you basically do something like this. 42, you'll exchange with 68. So do 42 and then 68. Done. And now when you check for pause, while pause is not equal to cycle start, Pause is actually equal to cycle start because cycle start is one and pause is one, which means, check this out. What has happened here? You have correctly placed 42. And now when you go back into the loop, I'll just copy this and overwrite it over here because that's just how it's supposed to work. So now when you go back into the loop, cycle start will become two because cycle start is now incremented in the range. Now position value doesn't really matter right now because it doesn't exist. 
So I'm just gonna eliminate this part. I'm gonna eliminate this part. It's cool. Cool, right? Now cycle start is equal to two. Now the awesome part about this sequence was that it happened quickly. 68 got replaced quickly. But in most cases that won't happen. And you'll need to go through this loop continuously until you reach that point where it goes enough in the in the front of the array to, to get that value. That that would basically happen over the over the time. But that is what rotating the array means. Rotation of the array is what actually means that you are you, you took one value, you know that it's overlapping the other value and then you need to replace it and then you basically rotate the element putting uh, putting uh, elements in their position over and over again until you get to the last element which is your uh, correct overlapped element. Now what is your item in this case? Item is array of cycle start. What is cycle start? Cycle start is 2. What is your item? Item became 79. Item becomes 79. That is what item becomes. Okay so pause is equal to cycle start and pause is equal to you know cycle start. What is cycle start? Cycle start is two. So your array, your i will in range of cycle start plus one, which is equal to three. I'll go from three to five. So three, uh, zero, one, two, three, and five. So five is an element you will never reach. Ob obviously, it is not included. So three and four is your uh, your array. So check if seventy nine is less than any of these. Of course. Um, uh, sorry, 79 is greater than any of these. Yes, 79 is greater than both of them. 79 is greater than both of them, which is why you will increment it twice and so let's say plus 2 and equal to 4. Then you will check, uh, of course, this is not true because you got a new value for position if position is not the same because we added plus 2. And then what you do is you check for duplicates. Obviously, there are none. And then you swap. Now you will swap item with 48 so now 48 will come over here and this will become 79 so your item is now 48 and this is 79 i'll copy this i'll take it at the bottom i'll overwrite this and now this these are your current uh, you know memory instances of the entire array 79 is here 79 is here now we'll go through the whole process again while pause is not equal to cycle start. What is the value of pause right now? Pause is supposed to be four because this is what you replaced. Is pause equal to cycle start? Of course not. It is not equal to cycle start at all. So what you do is you say pause is equal to cycle start. Okay, so pause will become equal to two. Your range will become three to five. Sorry, three to five. Uh, then you check. Then you check. If array of i, what is array of i at the moment? Array of three. So three and five is any of those less than the item 68 is less than the item no 79 is less than the item no which means you have the correct items right so basically this belongs at the second position is what this uh, sorting algorithm basically says so you basically what do you do you exchange it you check for duplicates and then you exchange it this is the swapping part right and then you write writes equal to one right plus equal to one so you do swapping so 48 will come over here and this will become 79 and then you basically go out of the loop over again and then i'll just say this i'll just copy this and put it here now what's going to happen what's going to happen if you observe the array has been correctly sorted but the array the, the the loop is still continuing the loop is still going round and round and round checking for the value. So if you go again, cycle start will become three in this case. It will say pause equal to cycle start. The range will go from four to five, which means there's only one value to check for now. That is the 79 value. And if you see this value, there's no, nothing that's less than it, nothing. And one more reason to not go through it is because um, there's no point. See, it basically knows that there's no reason to go through it. And basically it just says continue because pause does an increment and it says continue goes back and says five uh, but five doesn't it doesn't exist because it's supposed to be length minus one blah, blah blah and then it basically returns array and it returns the amount of writes you had you, you also calculate the amount of writes you had because you know that's just how it's supposed to be you need to know how many writes you had to judge the efficiency of the algorithm so your array is out and then you print the array and that's just how the cycle sort works so if i say run uh, you can see that it basically runs and gives you the same array that we had sorted. So that's just how it works. Um, I want to thank Wikipedia for this because the code for this uh, came from Wikipedia. 
um, it was pretty awesome and, and, and so you know explaining it made a lot of sense uh, so thanks for watching guys this is the cycle sort read the Wikipedia page it has like this is the best sorting Wikipedia page for the sorting algorithm that I've seen like I really like it um, so thanks for watching guys the code for this will be available in the description and on the Wikipedia page my job was to explain how it works and I've done that hopefully uh, let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this or you understood how it worked and uh, thanks for watching guys uh, like share and subscribe send this to a person who likes sorting algorithms and I will see you in the next video.